All right, so there's basically two ways on how to convert your S-Log3 footage to Rec. 709. I've been struggling with this. There are two ways and I'm gonna show you both of those ways and why I prefer the second one without wasting any of your time. Let's go. First things first, it's important to make sure that you know what kind of settings you have in the camera as well as what sequence you're working on. So uh, when it comes to the camera, I'm shooting in picture profile 8 and I'm using uh, the S-Log3 Gamma and color mode is the most important thing here because there are different options later on in the Premiere Pro. S-Gamma 3 Cine is my color mode and when it comes to the sequence, and let's go to the sequence settings, I'm working with the working color space is Rec. 709. So the first way is a very traditional one. We grab a clip onto the timeline. We also add a adjustment layer like so. And then we go changing the, the space to color. We click on adjustment layer. We have a Lumetri color here. We, from the drop down select an input LUT. And I have already downloaded the Sony Look Profiles. If you're not aware, you can actually get them for free from the Sony website. This, you know, is the same with any camera manufacturer. You probably can get all of these uh, lots and so on. So just download, you'll have a folder like this, and then you have to apply the right, correct lot, so-called conversion lot. Uh, so I'm gonna choose the first one, S Gamma 3 Cine S-Log 3 to 709. So I'm just gonna opening it, and it should give me pretty rough working states. I personally don't really like this way because I have to add the adjustment layer, I have to change the windows and I have to uh, import the LUT and, and there is a much easier and faster way where you cannot make that many mistakes. I'm gonna show you that right now. I actually found this on Adobe's uh, discussion log by Francis Crossman, he's an Adobe employee apparently, but what he says is very interesting. This method transforms log footage to color space of the sequence in a non-destructive real-time workflow rather than the common use of log to rec 7 and LUTs that can clip highlights, shadows and color information. So apparently this is a much safer, easier way and also uh, in general non-destructive way how to use it. So and the way is by interpreting the footage and that's super simple. Let me show you with these three clips. I'm gonna select them, right click, modify, interpret footage. You probably are aware of this because you have been changing the frame rates here. But here on the bottom is the color management. Uh, you can also select the input LUTs, but there's also one thing called color space override. Usually it's on a Rec. 709. That's why I told you it's really important to know what kind of settings you have in the camera because look, this first of all supports all the major camera brands, Canon, Panasonic, Sony and so on. I'm going to be selecting the Sony S-Log3 and that's why I told you it's important to know in what color mode you're working on. I'm working in, in color mode S-Gamma3 Cine, so I select that and nothing changes. Well, hello there, <laughs> but nothing changes even when I'm adding the video to the source window, also nothing changes. However, Look what happens. I drag it to the timeline and because my timeline is all correct, voila, we have color graded footage. And as you see, it doesn't change much from the one that was applied by a lot. And actually, I think personally, this is much better. And there are several reasons why. First of all, it's much faster. I can just select all of the clips and I can interpret the footage and they work out of the box. What about the computer speed? I know that a lot of you, for example, would be disabling the adjustment layer until the very last moment when you are exporting in order to save the resources of your computer. That's correct. Let's try it out. I have never tried it, so I'm grabbing the clip that is not currently corrected and imagine I'm doing my edit even you know separating it in pieces and cutting it up and so on and then what happens if I modify interpret footage right before I want to um, export the footage voila it works as you can see uh, clearly the the footage is edited and no matter where the clip is no matter how many pieces it has been cut in I just apply the interpret footage at the very end of all of my clips and we are done. I hope I didn't waste any of your time and this was helpful for you. If so, thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye guys.